So a lot of people have come to me asking for help learning leak code because they started using the strategy I talked about last year and it wasn't really working well for them. And so I kind of went on Reddit and I did some research and I found a new strategy I think is going to work really well for you guys. I'm going to be adopting it, so let's get into it. As you may or may not know, I'm a leak code engineering major at UCSD and I recently got an offer to work at Intuit this summer. So basically, I know a small amount about what I'm talking about, but I did get offers and interviews from pretty big companies, so I feel like I have a good amount to teach you guys. So despite the amount of time I spent grinding leak code last year, uh, I'm pretty much dog shit at algorithm problems right now because I haven't done any in about four months. I'm probably not as bad as I think I am, but whenever I open a problem, it feels like I kind of just blank out and then I do something else because I don't feel like doing it. Eight months before interview season starts again. On a side note, I used to dream about like hash maps and link lists and stuff, which I guess is pretty rare, but that's just the amount of time I spent doing coding and algorithm problems back then. So I think if that happens to you, I, it means that you're coding a lot and you should probably code a little bit less, but not enough so that you forget stuff. But without further ado, let's get into the new strategy for this year so that I can hopefully get that sweet, sweet mang offer for the street cred. So first things first, what you want to do is get a huge list of all the different types of leak code problem patterns so that you can go through them. This will be things like DFS, graph problems, union find, sliding window, and anything you could really think of having to pertain to leak code problems. So basically when you go into leak code and you click the DFS badge, all the problems tagged as DFS will appear in a list. And then after that, you can sort by frequency. So they come in order of how often people see them in actual tech interviews, which is super helpful. The idea here is that most problems are variations of other problems, just with different wording. So for example, in your math tests in high school, when you got word problems, that the teacher would go through the explanation for, on the test there would be more or less the same problem but with different wording. So you might have trouble recognizing what type of problem it actually is, but you do know how to do it. And the more that you see, the higher exposure you get to that kind of problem. So what you wanna do with this list is go through it, obviously. So you click on the first one and you really wanna understand the problem. So if it's DFS, I like to use my finger and try to see you know, how I would solve the graph or the grid on my own without doing it on a computer first. You can also use something like a whiteboard or a piece of paper, which I found super helpful for thinking through problems. And behind this step, you basically want to just understand what the problem is asking you, because you can't understand the solution if you don't understand the problem at all. Now that you understand what the problem is asking you, you want to go straight to the solution. This might sound unintuitive because how are you supposed to learn how to solve them if you're just learning how to look at the solutions, but we'll get into that in the next step. So you go straight to the solution, and you really wanna understand how it works. So if you have to go on a, like a YouTube video or a Medium article or something like that to understand, that's totally fine. And I encourage you to figure out the best method of learning for you. That could be visual, audio, my videos, other people's videos, whatever works. So you've copied the solution into your editor and now you wanna play with the different parameters. You wanna to try to break the code, change variables, see how the code handles different edge cases. And a big thing here is understanding what the edge cases for a specific problem could be. So many times in interviews, the interviewer asked me, what could an edge case be here? What could break this code? Can you write some tests for your solution? Things like that. So I highly encourage you to think about how you could break the solution and how exactly that solution handles edge cases, if that makes sense. Once you understand the problem and you're pretty sure you're good on the solution, you wanna move on to the next DFS problem. And the idea here is that after a few DFS problems, you'll start to see that they all have a really common structure of solution. So once you understand how the solution is structured for most DFS problems, you should try some other DFS problems you haven't seen before. The idea behind that is that now you should have a good idea of how to solve almost all the DFS problems. And DFS would be depth first search here, if you're not sure what that means. So after you're successful at solving, say, the depth first search pattern of problem, it's time to move on to the next pattern. So what happens after you understand each pattern on lead code? After you understand each pattern, I highly recommend that you practice at least one algorithm per day, uh, preferably two if you're going for FANG or higher, because there's only one way to perform better than you know 99% of other people, and that's to work 99% harder than them. So you basically want to go home every day. Uh, I heard people have a lot of success with doing like one in the morning and one at night. It can get to be a lot and there are cheat days, but you wanna make sure you're doing at least one algorithm problem per day leading up to interview season. I like to give myself a runway of about four to six months 
uh, for this year because I feel like it'll be a lot less stressful than trying to cram or even just take break days because everybody needs break days, you know? I can say with certainty that one thing that always killed me in interviews was when there was a gotcha that I didn't understand. For example, there was a union fine problem that I looked at the night before my meta interview. The next day, I literally got the same problem, but I was like, there's no way this is gonna be on my interview tomorrow. I should just go sleep and rest and I've studied enough. And it was literally the same exact problem that I had on Leetcode the night before, which is super annoying because I failed the interview, probably because of that and I never heard back. Things like this could have been avoided by using this new strategy for 2022. So that's why I decided to give it a try. If I'd been familiar with the pattern, I could have at least tried to reason through it in a coherent way, might have even passed the interview, and could have even gotten an offer later. I will say though that I don't think data structures and algorithms were my weakest link in applying for interviews this season. I think that what really set me behind was not having software engineer intern on my resume and not having like super solid full stack projects. I had a couple of web applications and mobile applications and uh, a little bit of experience at an internship I did at a consulting company. So even though it was a tech internship, I wasn't necessarily a software engineer that had been doing test driven development, which is what they're really looking for so that they get to skip that whole kind of onboarding process. Which is why on this channel, I'm planning on making some full stack tutorials using things like React, Next.js, Swift with iOS, uh, AWS, and Google Cloud. And by doing this, I hope to make some pretty unique portfolio projects that you guys can follow along with. Something like a course streaming website where you stream video from AWS and you allow users to create accounts, uh, pay for courses, and things like that because most of the courses I've found on YouTube are pretty cookie cutter and they're like uh, Spotify clone and Netflix clone and I don't really care about those that much because I feel like everyone kind of has those on their resume but also they're not like fully functional. So I'd like to make something fully functional that you guys can follow along with and hopefully get some pretty good projects that you can talk about. All that will also be test driven development as well so that you can say that, oh yes, I have made web applications with JavaScript and I can test them and basically I'm ready to go. Give me the job and I can work for you. Let me know in the comments what kind of uh, projects you guys would be interested in doing so that I can take that into account when planning my next videos. So that's gonna wrap up our video for today. Thank you guys so much for the likes and comments on my first algorithms video. Uh, I super appreciate all the feedback and things like that. I kind of blew up these past weeks. So I'm super appreciative of you guys for watching and I'm glad that you all were able to gain something from that video. If you're interested in more content on data structures, algorithms, projects, uh, coffee and just technology in general, you should definitely hit subscribe and let me know in the comments what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future and have a great day.